Hello, welcome to Yoga with Rach and Rach, thank you very much for joining me. We're on week four of our Apana Vayu and we're actually going to find our way onto our back. So Apana, we have a couple of lovely uh, practices with that. So all the way back on week one, we had our Apana Mudra. We actually have an asana or a pose specifically for the Apana downward movement. Uh, so Apana is that downward movement. Asana is the word we call um, yoga poses. It really means to sit. And when we bring those two words together, because Apana finishes with the, the letter A and Asana starts with the letter A, we merge those together. So we actually have Apana Sana. Sounds beautiful. But we're actually gonna find a way onto our back. And all we're doing for Apana Sana is lying on the back, bringing both knees in to the belly. Hands can rest on the front of the knees or onto the shins, let the arms relax. Slight tuck of the chin into the chest. If you feel that your head naturally wants to lift, make sure you have a pillow or a blanket or a block underneath your head to support you. So a parnasana, knees to belly. So really be aware of how you feel now that the whole of your spine is rooting, rounding down onto the mat. And from here, you've got both hands onto the shin. So we're gonna bring our right, hand, our, right, our right hand on our left hand, both hands onto the right knee. So you're gonna keep the right knee into the belly and then just gonna extend the left leg away. So see what feels comfortable. So you might have the leg pointing up, you might have the leg extending away, it might be comfortable to place the left heel down onto the mat. See what feels really comfortable for your back. So gently squeezing, hugging the right knee in towards the belly. Keeping the right knee into the belly, bringing the left knee in, both arms, hands onto the knees, the shins. And then hanging both hands over onto the left leg, even on the front of the knee or the shin as you extend the right leg away. Again, just find what feels comfortable for you. So you might have the leg pointing up towards the ceiling. Maybe it's descending away from you. Maybe the heel finds the floor, front of the mat. Gently hugging or squeezing that left knee into the belly. Keeping the left knee into the belly as you bring the right knee in. Just one last little moment in this Aparnasana, knees to belly. So releasing the hands down by your hips. Right now the knees are right into the belly, so we want to push the knees, the legs away. So the knees are over the hips. Keeping the knees bent, feet lifted. We want to keep the knees together and the feet together. So this one you might just get straight away. You might have to concentrate. So we're going to alternate between knees together and feet wide, and then feet together and knees wide. So start with both knees, both feet together. Hands might be on the belly or away from the hips. So we're going to keep the feet together and we're going to gently take the knees wide. So like we're going into a reclined bound angle pose. So we're going into some hip rotation. So remember I said a pana by you is situated in the hips and pelvis. And then bringing the knees together and taking the feet wide. Doesn't matter how far you go, bringing the feet together, taking the knees wide again. Bringing the knees together, take the feet wide. Bring the feet together and knees are wide. So wait until both the knees, both the feet are together before you then alternate the movement. So there's always a connection. Knees together and then the feet come together. Once they're together, the knees open wide. Bringing the knees together once they connect. Last one with the feet. Feet open wide. 
Let her bring her feet together. Now you can decide to do the next one here, or we're gonna to go to the one uh, in a moment, um, or you can have the legs straight, but from here we're actually gonna go into a shoelace. So we're gonna go into this movement of crossing the right leg over the left. And this might be enough, so the hands can stay by your hips, down by your side. Maybe it's comfortable to hold on to the front of the knees, the shins. So opposite hand will be on the opposite leg. So left hand onto your right leg, right hand onto the left leg. Maybe you're walking the hands down and you're keeping that element of knees together as you're then holding onto the feet if that's accessible taking the feet wide. If that's not comfortable, hands might be on the knees. Slowly releasing, hands up by your side. So remember I said you could either do the next variation of what we just did. So we did the knees wide, feet together, knees together, feet wide. So you can either keep the knees over the hips and the feet where they are, or you can have a go at extending the legs up. We're going to alternate so the feet are together so think about the inner arches touching keep the toes together and turn the heels out and then bring the heels together and turn the toes out bring the toes together push the heels out bring the heels together turn the toes out so keep going toes together heels out heels together toes out a couple more of each toes together Heels out, heels together, toes out, toes together, heels out, and heels together, toes out. If you have the legs straight, bend the knees. We're going to cross the left leg over this time. Again, the arms might not do anything, so we can just keep this really relaxed. Maybe you've got the hands on the front of the knees. Remember, opposite hand, so left leg. Right hand, left hand, right leg. Maybe you're walking down the shins towards the feet. Maybe you're holding onto the feet. It's helping to take the feet wide. So in that reclined shoelace pose. And when you're ready, gently releasing. We're going to take the feet down onto the mat, feet wide, knees together, and just sway the legs side to side. And you might decide as you slow that movement down to keep the knees together. Maybe you're extending the legs out, feet wide, your toes wide. And then moving into the last one. So have a slight tuck of the chin into the chest. Closing the eyes if they weren't already. Just coming back to the breath. So remember in week one, we were focusing on that anchoring the breath. Obviously in Savasana, we want the mind to be relaxed. So just use the breath as an anchor to keep you coming back. If the mind wanders, don't honor it that it's happened. It's fine. But come back to the breath. Your next inhale, your next exhale. Allow the breath to anchor and draw you back into the present moment.
open through the day and sasana for as long as you wish or if you're already you might stop for a break and then align us back into the body we bring the fingers the toes maybe stretching the arms the legs bringing the knees into the belly blinking the eyes open as you bring your awareness back into the room and slowly finding your way up to sitting. So thank you very much for joining me if it was just for this very short practice or maybe you've been joining me for the last four weeks for our Apana Vayu. I look forward to seeing you next week when we move into a very new Vayu movement. So thank you for joining me. If you haven't already, please do subscribe. If you've enjoyed these practices, do give them a thumbs up and share them with your friends. Let me know how you've been getting on in the comments below and I shall see you next week. Namaste.